Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vat Doers 2023 video and I'm so enjoying 2023 and the new videos that I'm making. I wanted to share this one with you about lighting and rendering. Now there's some really amazing new improvements to the lighting and to the rendering and I think you're going to love this so please make sure you watch this video to the end to see what we produce in a very short space of time. Thanks for watching everybody and see you later. And today we're going to be looking at the new amazing lighting and rendering capabilities of Vector's 2023. So you can see I've set up a really kind of nice little kind of simple model uh, specifically for the purposes of this and at the moment I've turned off all the textures and because I kind of wanted to show you a couple of really nice little settings that you can play with to get a few different render styles before we get a lot more realistic. Okay, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is uh, basically just show you that if I go to my shaded options, I've disabled absolutely everything at the moment. Okay, and if I disable the colours and the textures particularly, I'll just get this white card sort of model look. So we'll come back and look at these in a moment. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is just pop down into set lighting options. So this will set the lighting options for the layer. And all I'm going to do is enable the ambient occlusion. Now, ambient occlusion is a really nice little effect where you get this nice sort of soft shadowing in the corners where one edge meets another. We can play around with both the strength of the lighting, but also the strength of the ambient occlusion effect, depending on the kind of um, kind of look you're looking for, really. I quite like sort of between 50 and 75% and between 50, 500 and 750 as an offset. So depending on the amount and strength you would like, um, that's a really, really sort of nice little option you can see. And it's very easy to sort of play with and vary in real time. So already it's looking a little bit more three-dimensional. Um, when we look at the drawing, uh, you can kind of make out what's happening a bit more. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll double click our camera view and let's just render up the model. I'm going to go on and just turn on the ceiling. So I've made a, a ceiling here using the ceiling tool in a class. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool actually. And I can basically take my camera and get my walk through tools and walk around the model. So very easy and very responsive. You just want to kind of create this sort of white cardy look um, for the client without any sort of detail. Okay, good. Okay, so next let's go back to the camera and basically turn on a few other settings. So I'm going to go back to top plan. I'm just going to get my camera and physically move it to the location I want to stand. And uh, let's kind of just to begin with point it fairly horizontally. And all I do is double click to enable that camera view and I'm back in. I could save that one and basically that will save it with all the different rendering styles that I'm using. Okay, so let's go ahead now and start to look at the shaded options one by one. Now, of course, the very top one is basically textures. So if I enable the textures, you'll see the rendering, shaded rendering will re-render for a second, but it's not until I actually turn the colors on that we'll actually see the effect. Okay, so if you do have the textures on, but no colors, you'll still basically have white. And that's because all of the colors of the attributes in the objects are white. So it takes a second to re-render and that's how it's looking at the moment. Now, anti-aliasing basically reduces the pixelation on uh, angled edges and it doesn't make a huge difference to the speed, but it's definitely something that will increase the quality a little bit. So let's put it on. Drawing edges is something that you can do to make the drawing look a bit more kind of graphical. Um, so let's just click OK on that. OK, good. Um, there is a few other options in there for the edges. If you do want to, you can kind of make them quite sort of thick and bulky. Go for more of a kind of cartoony look as well, which looks pretty cool. Um, in fact, let's just save that view. Let's call that view two, just so I can kind of recall it. And I'll have a little drive around as it is. So if you want to go for more of a cartoony look, much more sort of graphical, that would work quite well, I would suggest. Okay, good. So let's go back into our options. Let's turn the edges back to one and we'll turn those off. So now what we're going to do is go to shadows. Now you won't see any shadows at the moment and that's because I've got no lighting enabled. So let's click OK and basically go to my layers. You'll notice that I've actually got two layers for lighting, a heliodons layer, which I'm now going to turn on. And that is basically just going to give me a little bit of sunlight coming through the window. You can just about see that. Um, but the sun isn't sort of penetrating very deeply at the moment. I could probably, let's just see if we can adjust that sun. 
We'll go to uh, the visualization palette to do this, which is here. And here you can see the Heliodon. So let's right click, force select. Okay, so I've got it selected now. And basically now the nice thing is I could sort of play through the different times of the year. You'll notice, of course, if I go to uh, things like January and February, the shadows are a lot deeper coming into the model. Um, and also what's nice is I can do solar animation and basically play through the different sort of times of the day just to get those sort of shadows coming quite deep into the model. So that looks really, really cool. Okay, good. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is enable some lights which are inside. So if I go to the lighting, you'll notice that I've actually turned on lots and lots of lights, but I can't see them. Okay, and the reason for that is I've got a setting up here in the options at the moment where all the lights are invisible. So if I do want to, I could just show them in the rendered mode. Now it can be a bit distracting, that's why this is there. Or you can say only in wireframe, so it means when you're in wireframe view, you can see them and they disappear when you're in shaded mode. So that's a really, really good option up in the lighting settings. If you don't know how to find these buttons, all you need to do is click here on this small arrow and just tick all of these options here and you'll find that some of those rendering options for the lighting are available. Okay, great. So with those lights selected, basically, let me just go back into wireframe. I'm going to click my wand tool or W on my particular workspace and I'm going to click onto those lights. Let's go back now into rendered mode. So I actually do have the lights selected. And what's really nice is you can see that I can basically play around with the brightness of those lights in real time. So here we go with it uh, sort of, if you like, selected. Let's turn it off, let's click, and let's go for a um, slightly different brighter color. Let's go for 100%. Takes a second for the lights to pop on, but that looks really nice. Uh, if we go up to say 200%, look at that, that's really, really cool. So it really kind of brightens up the model. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go into our shaded options again. We've got our lighting coming on now. And um, we're gonna go for three things. We've got environmental lighting. So if we tick that, basically any light from the environment will impact. If we go for environmental reflections, suddenly we'll get a little bit of reflecting light coming in from uh, what environment we've got. But the biggest impact we're gonna get is from object-based reflections. And you'll notice that now I've got these really nice reflections in the floor, which I didn't have before. So this is something that Vectorworks have introduced now, even in the shaded rendering mode. Uh, so we can just get a lot more kind of realism in our model. And look at all those lovely reflections coming off the silverware on the table and off the floor as well. So let me just disable that one more time. Let's turn off the object reflections and the environmental reflections. You know, this is where we were before. It looked kind of cool, but this is just the, the standard OpenGL. Um, look at the difference now when you enable these other options and, you know, really very little performance on um, penalty on performance at all. So what a great improvement in terms of the shaded rendering. I really, really like these new improvements. OK, so this is very cool. It's looking quite nice. Um, let's go back to our save view. As I say, if you do record the save view, it will bring back all of the rendering styles. So let's turn on all of these options that we wanted before, apart from the edges. And let's turn that one off. Okay, there we go, that's looking a lot more realistic. Let's now turn on the Heliodon. Look at those gorgeous reflections, but it's not really until we kick in the lighting that we're gonna get that space lit nice and, uh, nice and brightly. So I'm really pleased with that. Let's save that view, view three. And let's just kind of review where we started. We started with uh, this view, which was the unlit sort of shaded mode uh, using no textures and just the basic white color. We then went on to look at the textured mode, but going for more of a kind of cartoony type style and using the edges to kind of represent that in a very graphical kind of way. And then finally, we've gone for much more realistic lighting without the edges, but most importantly, these wonderful new lights and reflections. And one thing that I did forget to mention earlier is Vectorworks now supports an unlimited number of lights in OpenGL or what, what we call shaded view now. Now, previously, the limit was only eight. So on older Vectorworks files, you would have only had eight lights in uh, shaded mode until you went to Renderworks. 
But now we've got an unlimited number of lights. In fact, you can see that by the fact I've got, let's click, 42 lights here. So pretty amazing and basically makes a huge difference. Um, so let's just go back to our view one more time. And I really want to show you how rapidly we can render this out. So all I'm going to do is go to create viewport now. I'm going to basically go to a new sheet. Let's call this 04 and let's call this renders final. Okay, let's click OK and up the DPI. I'm going to go for about 200 dots per inch on this one. Um, basically, that's fine. I'm not going to name the viewport or anything. And in terms of rendering style, I'm going to go for, let's say, custom renderworks. And with the custom renderworks, I really like the fact you can tune the levels of quality. So I'm going to go for these medium settings and just check I've got anti-aliasing on. All of that looks absolutely fine. So we'll click OK. And basically, there is our view. And I'm basically going to click Update. So basically, that view has now been updated. So very, very rapid. And let's just get rid of these progress bars a little bit here. We'll kind of minimize that. And I'll just show you a couple of other render work modes that I wanted to introduce. And basically, these are quite nice. These are basically um, using without the textures, but the edge is on. But you can see no anti-aliasing, so it looks quite sort of almost uh, cartoony and a bit bitmap graphics. And finally, here's one with a bit of sketch on as well. Now, this is a really nice little effect that I've also introduced using the image effects, just to introduce some softening of those edges there. So really what I'm trying to show you is uh, RenderWorks is such a great program. It's so fully integrated and I really love the way now you can kind of basically animate through. And basically, I just want to show you something really cool. So basically, I'm going to save another view. Okay. And basically, what I'm going to do is go through to something in my scripts. So I'm going to go into my resources manager. And you'll notice that I've actually got this very cool little file called View Transitions, which I'm going to um, basically import in. So let's right click and import this transition scripts. Um, now I can share these with you if you're interested. So I've got this transition scripts here. And what you're going to find is um, these are really nice in that I can vary the speed of transition. So if I go for quite a nice lot of long time, let's go for say three seconds, I'll double click that one. What you're going to see now is when I go through to, let's move through to another view and just set up another view here. So I'm just going to go through to a view that's a bit closer. Okay, so we'll save this view. Let's call this view five. And let's just jump back to view four. So you should find you get a nice kind of smooth animation. And let's go to view five again. Can you see how it kind of varies the time? So it took three seconds rather than one. Let's go for something a little bit longer. Let's go for a 10 second and hide that one away. And let's just very, let's go for start with view five. Let's go back to view four. Can you see how smooth this is? It's quite nice. Um, it's animating over 10 seconds, basically, rather than the instant animation. And I really like that. Um, so that's a really nice little gadget. I really hope Vectorwitz will introduce some sort of icon or button up here where we can vary that transition uh, a bit more kind of easily in the future. But if you do want to kind of play around with that, you can create some amazing dynamic presentations now with Vectorworks. And this is superb. You can even do uh, what I call full screen. So if you do want to, you can go hide enabled palettes and good to learn the shortcut here. And basically that will go you full screen and hide all those palettes. So, you know, here I am just presenting to you live and moving around my model, as you can see. It's all looking really, really great with these reflections and so on. So let's do the shortcut. Let's bring those palettes back. I think I can remember that what it is. And look at the difference without the lighting. There we go. It looks obviously a lot darker, but you still get those nice reflections. Uh, there's not much on this side of the room, as you can see. So we'll kind of spin around. But I do like the reflections a lot. They look absolutely fantastic. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, everybody. Really just to show you how the lighting and the rendering in Vectorworks have always been amazing. The 3D modeling, of course, is absolutely incredible as well. So it really offers everything you ever need to do fantastic views and images. And if you do want to take it further, there's always Twin Motion that you can export to uh, via the new Datasmith export. But I will be going through that in other videos. So if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye.